guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Stephanie and I do beauty videos here on YouTube. I'm currently going to get into some more fitness and lifestyle weight loss videos as well and hopefully fashion. If you are new, I would love if you would subscribe, stay a while. I do a lot of tutorials and reviews and just hauling a lot of makeup products. And today we are gonna be talking about the new Anastasia Subculture Palette. There's been so much buzz about this palette and a lot of bad feedback about this palette. So I wanted to get this review up for you guys quickly. I'm gonna do a tutorial, swatches, and my final review of the palette. I've been hearing a lot of people having a lot of issues with this palette, so we're gonna jump in and we're gonna see how these perform on the eye and I'm gonna give you my overall opinion. If you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you want more reviews or if you enjoyed this video and let's get into the actual review. Starting off with the packaging, I love this packaging. I think it feels very nice, very well made. It has this velvety blue background and it says subculture in yellow and then the logo down here. I don't feel like this is going to get dirty. It doesn't feel like it's going to cling. I know some like NARS or the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, it's white so a lot of dirt can kind of build up, but I don't anticipate this happening with this, so I think the packaging is really, really nice. Now this retails for $42, which is middle of the road. It's not too crazy. I mean, it's not obviously not like affordable drugstore pricing, but I think it's a fair price for what you do get inside. Here's what the inside of the palette looks like. You do get 14 shades, and most of these shades are matte except for three, yes. So 11 of these shades are matte, and then you do have three shimmers. Now, they're all different textures, which we'll get into here, but the shades in here are extremely, extremely pigmented. Along with this, you do get a mirror, which is really nice if you want to take this traveling, and it's very small and compact, so I think it's good. You also do get a brush, which is somewhere in the heaps of brushes that is on my desk right now, but it's a pretty decent brush and I believe it is double sided so it has like two different brushes kind of in one which is nice for travel but I end up just using any kind of brush that I prefer. I don't typically like the brushes that come with palettes. In terms of colors, this is a very interesting palette. It's almost giving me mod vibes if that makes sense, like these muted yellows, almost like a muted pastel yellows and the maroons and the dark browns and blues, very pretty. Navies are gorgeous on the eyes, but I think they're very hard to make. So I think that's why you don't see them a lot, like a matte navy, you almost see like usually a bright blue, and seeing these muted colors is really different. I am getting um, sort of the vibes of the Jeffree Star, is it the Androgyny palette? There's a couple shades in here that do remind me of that, but this has a more options in terms of the muted like navies and greens. Before I jump into my tutorial, I am going to swatch all the shades on my arm for you guys, give you a close up so you can see how much pigment and how they swatch on the skin. Now that we've gone over the swatches, I'm going to jump into the demo and tutorial. So you can see how it applies on my eyes and I will do a voiceover to tell you my thoughts as we go because some shades perform differently than others. So I did use about seven shades on my eyes so I think I have a pretty good kind of understanding of how the palette is going to work and I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to work with it and which shadows I thought were a hit and which were a miss so let's get into that. Alright guys, starting out with the shade Roxy, which is this peachy shade. I'm just using this as a transition. I'm using a fluffy brush and just blending this back and forth. Now I sped up the clips because this one blended nicely, didn't have any issues, just layered it a couple times. This formula reminded me of a typical Anastasia shadow or even a Natasha Denona shadow, just really finely milled. Jumping in after we built that up, I'm going into Untamed. This one was the hardest one to work with in my opinion. Now I started just kind of dabbing it on the outer corner of my eye and then swirling and I realized that maybe I needed a smaller brush and so I started blending it in really nice and easy but you can see I'm doing a lot of dabbing and then I'm going and blending. So now I started blending it out because I thought, man, I maybe I made a mistake and so I thought, let me go in with this brush and try to build up the color. Now this color, I did have problems with it kind of grabbing in certain areas and then not sticking in others. So I ended up blending all over that peach and I knew now we have to go darker. <laughs> so I'm going into Axis, which I really did like, but I did have that issue a little bit again, just with it being so powdery in some areas it wasn't sticking. So I'm applying this to the outer portion of my eye and then I have more of a pencil brush to really bring this in before we cut the crease. So I'm just blending it any out or any harsh edges out, but again, I did have some and 
a little bit hard to work with. So I'm applying my concealer to my lid and I'm going to cut the crease just halfway. I felt like it was just too messy if I didn't do this step. So I was kind of forced into doing that. And hopefully when I play with this a little bit more, I can do some different looks. So I'm going to apply Adorn now to my lid where I did cut that crease. I wet my brush with a setting spray and this one applied nicely, just like a normal metallic shade. Now a key to this is kind of going up to that crease area and then dragging it down and I just built up the pigment and then you see me here blending it into that blue shade. So this one performed nicely. This is a typical shadow, probably the easiest shadow to work with in terms of comparing it to other brands. It's just a normal metallic shade. So I repeated the same steps on the other side, just really packing on that color, and making sure that it was vibrant. And now I'm going back in with my brush to try to blend that blue out just a little bit more. So I just thought I would include this. I didn't know if I should, but I thought people would ask what else I was wearing. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of the tutorial. So I did blend out my shape tape and now I'm setting with the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Powder, which I'm obsessed with lately. I'm just stamping it all over my face to set my makeup and then I'm gonna go into contouring. I'm using the Tarte palette to, this is like the face shaping palette. And I'm just gonna contour. I always use the Benefit brush because it's just easy and it fits right in my cheeks. <laughs> so then I'm gonna bronze up with the Marc Jacobs bronzer. I've really been enjoying this one for a matte bronzer. So I'm just going to bronze the perimeters of my face and I'm using a Smith Cosmetics brush. This is my favorite brush from them. And then I'm gonna go in to blush. This is a Juvia's Place blush palette and I'm using the shade B. This is amazing. I have a coupon code which I will leave down below. It's just Babs Beauty to save 10% off of Juvia's Place. And then to highlight, I'm going in with the Nicole Guerrero palette. I've been really liking this lately. I got it back out and fell in love again. So I'm just going to highlight uh, the tops of my cheekbones. And then moving back into the eyes, we're gonna finish off. I am going in to the shade Fudge. And I'm just going to kind of um, stamp this on my lower lash line. Now this one I didn't have any problems with. This one was nice, blended easily. I didn't feel like there was any choppiness that I could tell. Um, so I'm just gonna apply this on my lower lash line, almost really tight like a liner. And then jumping back into the palette, I'm going into All Star, which is like a cranberry red shade. And I'm sweeping this with a pencil brush on the lower lash line. Again, I didn't have any problems with this one either. I would have to see on the, um, like if I tried it in the crease, but I didn't have any problems on the lower lash line. So just building up that color and then I'm going into Cube. Now this one is the most sheer of all of the shades. It's like a duochrome light iridescent. So I did have to really build it up and it still was pretty sheer, but it did give a beautiful tint. So I wet my brush and then build it up. And for some reason it just worked really beautifully with all of the colors. And then I'm going in and adding a little bit more glitter highlight to the tops of my cheekbones. This is from Tarte and I just wet my brush and I'm applying this on the tops of my cheekbones because you can never be too glowy. So just applying this to my cupid's bow and tops of my cheekbones and then I'm gonna apply some pink liner in my waterline. This is from Marc Jacobs. It's so fucking good, it's the best. And then I'm going to line my lips just with a nude lip liner. Any nude lip liner you have, my hair is looking absolutely stunning in this clip, you're welcome for that. And then I'm gonna go in with some lipstick. Oh no, now I'm using the Laura, this is a Laura Geller like pink iridescent. I thought it would go with the inner corner. And then I applied like 18 lipsticks and this is what I came up with. So there you go. So now is the time where I give you my final thoughts and opinions on whether this palette is worth it or not. So this is a very tough palette to review in my opinion because it is so, so beautiful in terms of the color scheme. I think they knocked it out of the park. These colors are unlike anything I've seen other than the Androgyny palette from Jeffree Star, but like I said, this has a more expansive color range in that same wheelhouse, and I think these are very unique colors, and it's just very eye-catching. When I saw the photos online, I really wasn't that impressed, but when I actually purchased it, when I opened it, I really was uh, blown away by how beautiful it was. I really thought like, wow, it's really pretty, prettier than I was anticipating. Now in terms of quality of these shadows, I don't think that Anastasia releases anything that is bad quality. I mean, the only miss I can think from them would be their stick foundation, which I really didn't like. Everything else, they pretty much hit it out of the park. This one's a little bit tough for me because I don't know if it was because of the reviews I watched prior, 
but I was intimidated before I even got into this palette. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to mess this up. This is going to be really difficult. Now, upon blending the first shade, which I believe, no, I used this one, right? Roxy. Roxy blended perfectly. I kind of reminded me of like a Natasha Denona shadow, which is really nice. Very finely milled. A lot of powder kick up, but it blends really nicely. Now, when I went into the next shade, which is Untamed, that's when I felt a little bit scared. Um, and I'm sure you could see in the clips, I was... It was muddy and it was like grabbing in certain areas and then it was kind of not sticking in others. So I did find specifically Untamed pretty hard to work with, almost to the point where I almost wiped off my makeup. And then I thought, no, I'll just go over it with a cut crease or a half cut crease to kind of clean up any blending. So I do think, like I said, this is not a palette for beginners. I think it's going to be really hard to work with because these are so insanely pigmented and soft. And I find that, like I said, some areas they feel like they're sticking and other areas they're kind of just swiping back and forth and I feel like it can get muddy very quickly. Now in terms of All Star, Axis, and Fudge, those all performed beautifully. Now I used two on the bottom and then Axis is really beautiful. It's a standout shade for me on the outer V and I didn't have any problems. The shade Adorn was beautiful on the lid, beautiful bronzy copper shade and I just wet my brush and it applied like any other metallic shadow. So I think this is probably the easiest one to work with. Now, Electric, to me, feels like a little bit of a dazzle shadow. Um, like when you, it's very hard, or at least mine is, and then you press pretty hard and you get that really beautiful shine, but it's a very sheer color. Like in comparison to that one, can you see like, it's not as shiny, but there's more pigment. This one is more of like a sheer, glittery kind of top coat. Same thing with Cube. Now, Cube is the sheerest of them all. And it really was like a weird color. I thought, why did they put that in there? But when I put it on the inner corner with these colors, it was stunning. So can you see it there? It is a very faint, very, very faint pink shade. And I love pink shades, but it is very faint. I mean, I'm pressing hard to get that pigment. So like I said, you've got the two kind of sheer colors. And I don't know if they had made those for the inner corner to kind of add a little bit of color to the kind of mod theme. But just be noted that you really only have one metallic, true metallic pigmented shade. And then the other two are almost just like washes of color, iridescent kind of duochrome. Now, upon seeing other reviews, I did see people that were struggling. I, I mean, I literally watched the videos and it was grabbing and it was really muddy and the kick up was insane my now I definitely have kick up but it's not nearly like some of the photos I've seen so my determination is is there a quality control issue I don't know it seems like it because I've seen other people like their shade cube was completely shattered and really like broken and soft mine is very hard to the touch so I feel like I got a good palette, but my overall review is, is it beautiful? Absolutely. Is it worth $42? Yes. But be warned, if you are new to makeup or you have issues blending with your existing makeup, I would definitely steer clear of this. This is going to be hard to work with. It's just kind of like, almost like the Huda Beauty in the sense that they come out with innovative products, but it's not always the most user-friendly. Uh, like, my Violet Voss shadows just blend like a dream. Like, Natasha Denona shadows just blend, just like, I barely even do anything and they've already blended. This one, you have to be very careful, very light-handed, and make sure that you're not slopping it all over. This is not going to be a, I wake up and throw this in the crease and roll out. This is going to be, it's my birthday, I want to do a cut crease or a double cut crease, and I'm going to sit here for two hours and perfect this. So that is my overall opinion. I hope that it makes sense. I really, really think this is beautiful but I just think that it's really for pro makeup artists and just with everything I've been seeing, I just, I would say if you're on the fence, wait until it comes to um, Sephora or somewhere that you can return it because of the quality control issues that I feel like are going on and also just the intense, intense pigment that makes these harder to blend. Hopefully that made sense. I was trying to give like a review. I'm not a pro and I made it work but I could see how it could go left real quick. And after my second color, I really was almost gonna wipe it off and restart, and then I started getting a little nervous. So you can make it work, but just be warned, you're gonna have to work a little bit harder, but the end result is stunning. 
Alright guys, that is my full review and demo of the new Anastasia Subculture Palette. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. If you want to see more tutorials with this palette, let me know down below and I can definitely do that. It's very inspiring. The colors just really kind of have me thinking outside of the box. So I definitely want to do some more tutorials with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.